If you've been overwhelmed by the crazy amount of updates in the diabetes tech world, you're not alone. I am a certified diabetes care and education specialist and a person living with diabetes and I have no clue what's going on half of the time. So my ADHD and I present to you a five minute diabetes tech update. You may not have heard of the Eversense. It is an implantable continuous glucose monitor that is placed in the upper arm by a trained physician, and it lasts 365 days. You heard that right, it lasts a whole year. The transmitter is rechargeable and removable as it sits on this very spiffy silicone adhesive um, that is placed above the implanted sensor. Eversense hasn't really taken off as a mainstream because people often have trouble finding finding a trained professional to place the sensor for them. And because it lasts so long, it does require daily calibration, which might be a deal breaker for some people. However, Sensonics has recently partnered with Sequel MedTech to integrate this continuous glucose monitor with the upcoming Twist insulin pump. This is kind of a huge deal because Eversense will finally be able to integrate with an automated insulin delivery pump, and this may create more interest for people to seek out using the device. Personally, the fact that it now lasts one year instead of six months, and the fact that it integrates with an AID pump that I feel is worthy of my time makes me very interested in trying it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Would you be interested in having an implanted CGM or does that skeeve you out? <sighs> On to the next update. The new Control IQ Plus software brings extended bolus options up to eight hours and gives you the option for temporary basal rates. Also, here's the kicker. It's now approved for kids as young as two years old and for adults living with type two diabetes. Inclusivity for the win. Thank you, Tandem. You may have been using an AID pump for so long that you forgot why temp basils and extended boluses are important. So let's have a quick review on those. Temp basils will allow for better activity mode options. Right now, the activity mode in Tandem just changes the target at which your pump is correcting you to. It's at like 150. For some people, this is still too much insulin when they're exercising, depending on the type of exercise you do. Temp basils will allow people to say, no, I need like 10% of what I typically take, or I need 0% uh, for X amount of time. So this will give people a lot more room to play around with. Some other times that we used temp basils were things like menstrual cycle changes. I don't know. I would probably still be using the different profiles in the tandem pump as opposed to a temp basil because the hormone changes are so much longer. So you probably will need a different profile that will adjust your insulin to carb ratios and your basal rate and your insulin sensitivity factors. Another good time for temp basils is just times of like high stress. So you're getting on an airplane or your boss is yelling at you, you're having sex, whatever it might be. Just just those those little moments of resistance or extra sensitivity. I'm extra excited about the extended bolus features. Now, originally we could do two hours extended bolus in Tandem Control IQ. This typically isn't enough for an extended bolus. Now you can do up to eight, which is pretty wild. I can't think of a time when I've personally ever needed an eight hour extended bolus, but an extended bolus is when we stretch the bolus out over a period of time that we specified. Typically the pump, you know, if you say I need eight units for this meal, it'll give you eight units over a couple of minutes and then it's giving you that fat bolus. Now an extended bolus means that I want this bolus, but I want it delivered slowly over three to four hours. When do we use an extended? Typically, very most people are going to use an extended bolus for when you are eating pizza or a complex meal that you get at a restaurant or Thanksgiving dinner, something really big, and that has heavy protein, heavy fat alongside pretty high carbohydrate. Other people that would really benefit from these extended boluses are those with slowed gastric emptying. So those would be people that have gastroparesis or are using GLP-1 medications like semaglutide or terzepatide, um, Victoza, Trulicity, all of those good things. 
And finally, the last update. The FDA has approved the Dexcom G7 15-day sensor for diabetics ages 18 and up. This is currently the longest wear on the sensor market currently, although it really took Dexcom their sweet time to catch up to Libre's wear time, which has been 14 days from the beginning. And they still don't compare with their MARD scores. The new sensor boasts an 8% MARD, which is an improvement from the G7 predecessor, but Freestyle Libre 3 is still more accurate and cost accessible with a MARD of 7.8%. Whew, so we made it. At this time, if you are interested in learning more about cool diabetes tech options, take a look at this video here or this one.